Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. Today we're continuing our series on starting seeds. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you everything that you need to start your own seeds yourself at home on a budget. So today we're here in my seed starting room, which doubles as my bedroom. And I just wanted to give you guys a little tour of my seed starting setup. As I mentioned, I like to garden on a budget. I don't like to spend a lot of extra money. So I'm going to show you how I start my seeds really economically and really simply at home. So the first thing I wanna show you is my seed starting shelf. Now, depending on your goals, you may not need as much space as I have, or you may need more. This is just a basic utility shelf that I got. I wanna say, I think I ordered it from Home Depot or someplace like that. And I wanna say that honestly, if I was starting over, starting from scratch and getting a new shelf, I think I would get a slightly different one. As you can see here, the shelves are particle board. I think that it would be better to get one of those wire shelves. Particle board is not really a good friend to water. You know, I use these bottom trays under my seeds to collect all the excess water from when I water my seedlings. But you know, when you're dealing with a lot of water, there's going to be a little bit of splash. And, and it's really best to avoid getting wood like this wet. So what we did instead, since I had already purchased this shelf, my husband just sealed all these shelves with a thin layer of sealer, I think it was polyurethane or something like that, so that if a little bit of water splashes onto these shelves, they will be okay. But as I said, I think if I was starting over, I think I would get wire shelves from the beginning so that I wouldn't have to have that water concern. So you can see what I mean here about particle board. I think that the all metal of a wire shelf would probably be a little bit of a better fit for seed starting. So as you can see here, this shelf is designed to be a four shelf unit. So I have these two main shelves here that I use for starting my seeds. When your seedlings first start, you want them to be really close to their light source. So having these, these shelves that are a little bit narrower together, as you can see on the edges of my shelving system here, these are all adjustable, so I can adjust them to whatever height I want. I also did my best to make my grow lights adjustable. Um, I'll show you that in a minute and you'll see what works and doesn't work about it, but we'll, we'll get to that when we talk about lighting. But for the purposes of this shelving, I have these two shelves here that I use for starting my seeds when they're small. You can see I've got this top shelf up here that I just use for all my seed starting accessories. You can see I've got some extra pots here. I've got my seed organizers here filled with seeds. This is the, this is the cup that I like to use for watering. I've got various things like labels and markers. So all that kind of stuff goes on the top shelf there. And then we've got these next two shelves that are used for seed starting. And the final shelf you can see there's quite a bit more space there, and I use that for when my plants have grown out and they're a little bit taller and need some more space. There is a space here where I could add an additional shelf if I wanted a little bit more grow space, but I find that for the most part, I don't really use that additional shelf. I prefer to have a larger area here because by the end of, by the end of seed starting season, before my plants are ready to move outside, a lot of times I have a lot of plants that are really too big for the smaller shelving area up there. And as they get larger, they don't need to be quite as close to the light anymore. So this allows me to put some of my larger plants like tomatoes and plants like that when they're, when they're ready to move outside, but the conditions aren't quite right yet. They need a little more space. So I like to grow them on the bottom shelf. Now you can see right now, I've got these shelves filled with various trays and pots. These will all get distributed and used for various seed starting tasks as the season goes on. Now, if you're growing on a smaller scale than me, you may not need this much space. One shelf might be enough for you to start your seeds and to grow them until they're ready to go outside into the garden. So depending on your situation, you may need more space than me, you may need less. I'm just showing you what I use here. So the next thing that I want to talk about that you're going to want to consider when it comes to starting your own seeds is lighting. You can see that I have these grow lights here. These are not fancy expensive grow lights. These are cheap shop lights that you could get at Home Depot or any hardware store like that. I actually found these on Facebook Marketplace quite a long time ago, probably about eight years or so, and purchased them used. So I got an even better deal than that. These are just fluorescent lights. I replaced them with just the daylight fluorescent bulbs that fit these units here. Now, that admittedly is probably not the most energy efficient solution. It probably cost me a little bit more on electricity, but that's what I was able to get in the meantime. And honestly, even though these aren't specific grow lights, these have worked really well at growing my plants for the past however many, eight or so years. Now, that being said, 
I would like to upgrade to something that's a little bit more energy efficient, a little bit cheaper to power. So probably my next splurge, whatever it's in the budget, is going to be some LED grow lights because they take a little bit less electricity to run. But for the meantime, these work completely fine. I actually got a set of four of these and I have another one down here that you can't see on the lower shelf. I'm just gonna show you how I rigged these up. Now, this is just my plan to, this is just how I rigged these up. If I had asked Dan to do this, he probably would have come up with a much more elegant and user-friendly solution than what I came up with. But this was something I was just doing on my own and honestly, it worked, it works really well. It's, the one thing I will say is it's not easy to adjust the lights. So as I mentioned before, when you first start your seedlings, when they first sprout, you really want them to be really close to the light, probably an inch or at most two inches away from the light when they're really small. That prevents your seedlings from getting leggy. So in an ideal world, what I would do is adjust my grow lights to be really close to the seedlings until they grow larger and then I would adjust them back up. That is kind of a pain to do practically. So what I prefer to do instead is to raise up the trays. I'll just stack some boxes or something like that under the trays to get them closer to the lights. And then as the seedlings grow, I just remove those to bring them down a little bit. And in the case of something like tomatoes that gets really tall, they'll eventually get moved down to my lower shelf where they'll have even more space to sprawl. So to rig up these lights, basically what I did was I just got this length of chain here and ran it over the top. So this chain goes all the way atop, across the top of the shelf and goes all the way down. Let me try to get you a better angle there. And it goes all the way down to the lower shelf here. And I just got these little hooks. Then I got some shorter pieces of chain here, which attach to the grow lights. And I just got these little hooks here that attach the shorter pieces of chain to the larger pieces of chain. The idea was that I would be able to change the level of the grow lights by just changing which part of the chain they were attached to. Works great in theory. In reality, it's kind of a pain to adjust. So as I said, I just keep these how they are. But it does work great for holding the lights in place. So even though my plan to make these adjustable didn't work so well, my plan for rigging these up worked fine. So I've still been pretty happy with it. I do recommend that unless you have a greenhouse or maybe a really bright sunroom that you do use some sort of grow lights though. So of course other people may have very different experiences than me, but it has been my personal experience that if you try to start seedlings just in a sunny windowsill or something like that, they have never really been that successful for me. I find that seedlings that I start under grow lights do a lot better than seedlings that I try to start in the window. Now obviously if you have a greenhouse, that's going to have an abundance of natural light. You know, I'm here in Connecticut, so if you live somewhere that's a little more southern, a little bit sunnier, you may have better success with that as well. So it's definitely, if you don't have grow lights, I would say it's definitely worth growing something even if you, even if the only way to make it work is in your window. Now that being said, if you have a different experience than I do, if you have had success growing seedlings just in a sunny window, go ahead and leave that in the comments because I would love to hear your experience too. Because as I said, this is my personal experience. I know it's not going to be the same for everyone. So now we've talked about space and we've talked about lighting. Next, I want to talk about what I actually grow my seedlings in. Now, I know I mentioned that this video is seed starting on a budget and that is true. I do have some trays that I did pay a little bit more for. These aren't bottom of the line. They have held up really well for me so far though and I can tell they have lots of life left in them. So even though it was a little bit more of an investment up front, I think that it's going to be worth it in the long run, both because it's going to save me money and it's also going to save a lot of plastic from getting thrown out. So I'm going to show you those trays and I'm also going to show you some other little more budget friendly options that I use as well. So I have these tray systems from the Bootstrap Farmer. You may have seen them recommended by other YouTubers because I know they're fairly popular because they're such sturdy construction. But this base tray here doesn't have any holes in it. So that will be waterproof and that holds in the water and prevents it from getting on my shelf. Next, there's this tray insert, which you can see has all these little receptacles in it to hold these little trays in. I really like this because it holds the trays or it holds the little pots in place and prevents them from tipping over and getting everywhere. So as I said, this system is a little bit more pricey, but this is going to be I want to say maybe my third year using it, it's still just as good as when I got it and I know it'll hold up for many more years. This is really sturdy plastic. So you can see I have all these little pots in here. 
Now, depending on what I'm growing in these pots, I may leave it in here until it's ready to be transplanted out into the garden. If it's something that's a little bit larger, I'll transplant it into a larger pot. We'll talk about the actual mechanics of seed starting when it's time to do that, but for now, I just want to give you a little bit of a rundown of my setup. So one of the reasons I really like these trays, as I mentioned, I really like that it is very sturdy plastic, but the other thing I really like is that it makes bottom watering really easy. Bottom watering is by far my preferred method to water seedlings because for one, it's easier. You just fill this bottom tray with water, put maybe an inch or so of water in it, and then the plants in here will all suck up the water. Much easier than watering them individually, and it's also healthier for the seedlings. Again, we'll talk more about that when we get into, when we get into actually starting the seeds, but I just wanted to explain why I like this. Now, you can still use the concept of bottom watering even if you don't want to use one of these trays. So this tray here, this is also from the Bootstrap Farmer, so it's also a little bit more of an investment, a little bit more heavy duty, but you can get cheaper trays like this anywhere, or you can use something that you already have. I have, in a pinch, when I've had more, I've had too many plants that don't fit in all my trays, I've used things like little flat Tupperware containers and stuck my pots in there. They still work great for bottom watering, they also still work great for collecting water that runs out of the pots and preventing it from getting everywhere. So you don't have to use a heavy duty tray like this. I like this one because it's so sturdy, but you do want something that is going to collect the water. And ideally you want something that's going to allow you to bottom water. Now I also have all of these pots here. These pots are reused pots from plants that I've purchased from a local nursery. And these have held up for me for several years as well. You know, over the years, even though I like to start my own seeds, I do every year, I still do buy a few plants from the local nursery. And over time, I have accumulated quite the collection of these pots. Now you can still use pots like this in a bottom watering system. You can just stack them up here. And I can use this exactly the same way as the other tray. We can just pour water into the bottom of this tray here and all the plants in these pots will just absorb the water that they need. And now you can see these pots are a little bit larger. So when I'm growing something like a tomato, something that really needs a little more space, I will ultimately up pot it into something like this before it actually goes out into the garden. So this is another option. I, these, these pots are a little bit large, so I wouldn't initially start my seeds in here because that would just take up a lot more space than it really needs to. But I do like to have these on hand to transplant my seeds into once they get growing a little bit. Now down here, you can see I have more pots. These are all additionally pots that I've saved from a local nursery. I have these that are quite a bit smaller. So these could work for initially starting seeds in or for growing something that's gonna be a little bit smaller and not need as much space before being planted out. I also have some of these six packs I've saved from local nurseries. So as you can see, these are definitely quite a bit flimsier. These definitely will not last as long. I will sometimes get one, maybe even two additional years out of these and then they end up tearing and I have to toss them. But honestly, I bought these for the plants that were in them. I didn't buy these for the, for the six packs. So I consider these free. So this is another great way to start plants on a budget. I also have this seed starting tray. As you can see, this has a lot more cells, which are much smaller. I like to use this for things like flowers and herbs, something that isn't going to grow as large. Additionally, something that probably doesn't need to be grown inside for as long before being transplanted out. So I usually use about two of these trays I'll fill one completely with flowers and one completely with culinary herbs like basil and other plants like that. And then I'll just transplant them outside directly from this container once they're ready. One other additional budget-friendly option that you can think of is the containers you use don't have to be designed for seed starting. You can see I have some plastic cups here. I like to start some plants in these. Well, honestly, I don't usually start them in here, but a lot of times I'll transplant them into these instead of into a nicer pot. A lot of times I'll do that when I'm starting extra plants to gift to people. That way they don't have to worry about returning a pot to me and I don't have to worry about losing my pot and not getting it back. So these can make great options whether you're planning to give them away or whether you are planning to grow them yourself. Either way, just think outside the box. Whatever you're using doesn't have to be designed for seed starting. It can still work great for you. If you are using something like this though, you are going to want to make sure to poke drainage holes in the bottom. I find that using a drill works really well. My husband will just take a stack of these and drill maybe three or four little holes in the bottom of this and that works great for me. 
You can also reuse things like yogurt containers, little pots like that. Anything like that can become a seed starting pot as long as you just wash it out really well and make sure to give it drainage holes. I do also want to mention these couple of heat mats that I have here. I have two heat mats. You can see one of them's under this tray here. And these are just basic heat mats. I think I found these on Amazon. So these heat mats are not essential when it comes to seed starting. I started seeds for many years before I got these, and I still start the majority of my seeds without these, but I find that these heat mats are really useful when it comes to starting pepper seeds specifically. I also use these for starting sweet potato slips. Now I have started pepper seeds and started sweet potato slips without a heat mat, and it's definitely doable, but this does make it a lot quicker, and I found that I had better germination with my peppers using this heat mat. So this is something that I would recommend if you're planning to start, if you're planning to start peppers or sweet potatoes, there are some other types of seeds that you may want to start that would really benefit from a heat mat too. But those are the only applications that I personally use these heating mats for. So you can definitely do it without it, but it does give better results, especially with peppers. If you have any other types of seeds that you use a heat mat for that you find that it really improves your results, I would appreciate if you leave that in the comments because I would really love to hear what else you find a heat mat really benefits. One other thing you're going to want to consider is a fan. So you can see I just have this little corner fan, not anything fancy. You are going to want some way to keep air movement flowing around your seedlings. This obviously isn't anything fancy. This is just a cheap little fan that my husband already had. So what I do is I just stick this on the shelf with my seeds and I just make sure to move it around to different shelves during the day to make sure that all of my seedlings get some airflow. The reason you want to have airflow around your seedlings, there's a couple of reasons actually. It can help with preventing disease from building up. You know, when you're growing a lot of plants really close together in a humid environment like that, or I should say it creates a humid environment, which can lead to disease. We obviously want to avoid that. It can also lead to things like fungus gnats. They thrive in really damp soil, and we want to prevent an infestation of those because they are no fun. The other reason you're going to want to have moving air around your seedlings is because when you're growing your seedlings in your house like this, they're in a really controlled, really sheltered environment. They're not exposed to direct sunshine. They're not exposed to wind or all of the stresses that they're eventually going to have to have to face when they move outside. So by simulating a little bit of wind movement with a fan like this, you're helping them to just become accustomed to that a little bit. It helps them to grow a stronger stem. It helps them to learn to evaporate a little bit less moisture, just to conserve moisture and hold on to it. It's just all around going to help your seedlings to develop into healthier plants. Now, honestly, I have a ceiling fan in my room. I could probably get away with just running that all the time and not really need this fan, but I do like to have this fan going on my seedlings as well. Now, you can also just kind of brush your hand over your seedlings as you go by. Sometimes I just blow on them a little bit just to the more low level stress you can introduce to them is in the more low level environmental, I don't really wanna say stressors, but the more little challenges you can give them are going to help them to become stronger plants in the long run. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today in my little seed starting center. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this gives you some ideas for starting your own seeds. And as I said, really just work with what you have. You don't need to have a big fancy setup. You don't need to start seeds on this type of a scale. Honestly, I would love to start many more seeds than I do. I would love to have a whole greenhouse, but for the moment, this is what I have and this works really well for me. Now, if your seed starting setup is different than mine, I would love to hear what works for you in the comments. If you have any seed starting tips or especially equipment that you recommend, and also, while I'm on the topic, if you have some fairly inexpensive but energy efficient LED grow lights that you'd, like to rec that you'd like to recommend for me, I might be in the market for those really soon. So I would love to hear your recommendations for those as well. I am really looking forward to starting seeds with you guys. I can't wait for spring. So I hope you're having a great day and I can't wait to see you soon. I'll see you next time.